So last time when we stopped, which section we were discussing? 26. Section 26 we were talking about. Oh. That have was completed. We were discussing section 20. 20. Right? Section 26, we had already completed. You export the goods by paying the export duty and the goods are returned otherwise then by way of resale within a period of one year. Then whatever amount of export duty has been paid, that is refundable. And therefore, we came to section 20, re-import of the goods. Right? So section 20... This talks about re-import of goods. Re-import, it means the goods are exported from India. Goods exported from India, those are being brought back. Why the goods are being returned or being brought back? Right? Reasons. Now, this is pure thinking. Why the goods shall be brought in, brought back? Right? Reason number one. Goods not sold or rejected or somewhat similar word, right? Number two, repair, maintenance done abroad. Number three, processing or manufacturing done abroad. Number four, execution of project. Number five, exhibitions. So many reasons are there, right? Generally, people talk about only line number one, right? Now, there can be one more situation Repair and maintenance in India required. This is repair and maintenance done abroad. Right. Goods exported can be brought back for repair and maintenance in India as well. Right. And as of now, as of today, Air India is developing a facility only for repair, for repair and maintenance of the aircrafts in India. And they have also got the, some latest business out of that also. So even the aircrafts which are not manufactured in India, repair maintenance can be done in India. Right? Vessels, lots of vessels are repaired in India. Okay, that is a larger thing. Smaller things are again possible. So number six, repairs and maintenance. in India. Right? This is not the end of the list. Some more examples can be there. So, so many regions, so many purposes under which the goods already exported from India can be brought back to India. Is this clear to everyone?
Now, how many of you have read the notification under section 20, which I gave you? Quickly tell me how many of you have read the notification? Okay. No problems. But this notification you have to go through. I have not received a notification. It will come. Okay, remind me after the lecture. I'll send you immediately. Okay? Hmm. Because that is very, very crucial. Now, what section 20 says, if goods are imported into India after exportation, they are found. Okay? So, first thing is goods are exported from India. Such goods, such goods means goods exported from India shall be liable to duty and be subject to all conditions and restrictions, if any, to which the goods of the like kind and value are liable or subject on the importation thereof. So if the goods have been exported from India, if the goods are brought back, those will not be treated or there is no special treatment is required to be given to goods because those were sent from India. For every purpose, including duty, those will be treated at par with the other imported goods. Means the duty is the same applicable, restrictions or prohibitions same applicable, everything will remain same. So in nutshell, duty will be payable unless there is some exemption. Right? So where the exemption can be granted? That is section 25. There is only one section in the, in the act where the exemptions can be given. Do you remember section 25? I discussed section 25 along with section 12. Power of the central government to allow exemptions and under section 25 subsection 1 exemption can be given by way of notification in the official gazette. So here we already have notification. Right? So why it is notification? Because whatever information is shared for the general public, that is to be published by way of notification. And once published as a notification, it is deemed to be known to all. Right? That's why any exemption which is common for all will always be given by way of notification in the official gazette. And that is to be given under section 25, subsection 1. Okay, so now you can, why it is given, why we are studying under, sec, under section 20? Because section 20 is saying the imported goods will be treated. I mean, the same duty is applicable on the, even if the goods are being re-imported. So you have exported goods from India, right? Now imagine for a moment that you had paid some kind of duty at the time of export of the, export of the goods and the goods are returned. Then according to section 26, if the goods are returned unsold within a period of one year from the date of exportation thereof, the full export duty is refundable. That is about the export duty. What about the import duty? Goods being exported are being brought back. Right. So what is the imported goods? Goods originating from a place outside India. Then coming to India. So whether the goods being brought back will can be treated as imported goods or not. Whether those can be treated as imported goods or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. That's why this is the section. If those are not the imported goods, question the question of the section does not arise. And I've already given you a number of reasons. Right. Maybe the goods were delivered to the customer. The customer already experimented or, or uh, tried to do the experimentation with thereof for a period of one month, two months, and three months, according to the guarantee. And then he finds that the goods are not workable. He returns. Or rejected or not accepted, but all that comes after the goods have landed in that country. Okay, so that's why I say if the imported, if the goods are imported into India after exportation thereof. So if the exportation process has not been completed, this section will not be applicable. Justin, read very minutely. If the process of exportation has not been completed, this section will not be applicable. 
when the export process is complete. After coming the payment from the foreign country, sir. Customer does not include the payment cross, at all. When the goods cross Indian territorial waters. Territorial waters. For the purpose of customs. Goods cross Indian territorial waters with the object of being, being delivered abroad. Yes. Right. But actually export is completed only after the goods have been delivered abroad. So by chance something goes wrong, goods, goods, uh, goods or you can say the vessel goes out of the Indian, to, Indian water, Indian custom water. And then it comes back. Right. So goods are actually have gone out of the Indian custom water also, not only territorial, I'm talking about the custom waters also. And then the vessel is coming back. Can we treat that as imported goods? Yes, that is imported goods. Nahi hoga. No, nahi hoga. Nahi hoga. Kyo nahi hoga? Because for, uh, for import, for being delivered outside. It has delivery yes, abhi to delivery nahi hoga. Yes, delivery nahi hoga. Yes, abhi to delivery nahi hoga. Right. So for import, the first step is the goods should originate from a place outside India. Not those goods originated from India and without having any and uh, without having uh, being unloaded at any place, those are coming back to India. Those cannot be considered as imported goods. So in that, this section doesn't apply. Right. So first thing to understand the section is that this section applies only if the process of export has been completed. If the export process is not completed, this section does not apply. Goods are sent outside India and then those are coming back. Now, let us take a practical example of this. Goods are loaded from Mumbai or the Navaseva airport. Goods are being unloaded in, say, Kolkata. Right. But before coming to Kolkata, the vessel has already gone to some other country. Right. Goods have crossed Indian custom waters. To watch full video join online batch weekdays 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. call Tail Institute.